Hello, everyone. I'm State Senator Judy Schwank, and I am so sorry that I can't be there today for your uh, forum on social work and the connection of that to some of the serious issues that we're facing in society right now. But since I couldn't be there, I thought the next best thing would be to perhaps send a video interview um, to talk about some of the issues that you had asked me to address. One of the things that I do as a state senator is that I have a monthly uh, tele television program um, that is available on my website as well as on some of our community television stations. And when I do that, I always have a co-host, Dawn Rooney, who interviews me and asks me some questions about some of the most important topics that we're addressing in the uh, state legislature. So I've invited Dawn, thank you Dawn, for being here today to sort of help me um, have a conversation and talk with you about some of the things that we're facing. So welcome Dawn. Thank you Senator, thank you. It's nice to be here and let's start off by talking about social workers. This is a very, very important part of uh, the uh, whole medical community that doesn't get enough credit, I don't think, or doesn't get enough uh, uh, airtime, if you will, to talk about, to talk about the importance of social workers. Well, you, you're right, very definitely. I've been a strong uh, proponent of social work and the professionalism of social work. As some of the participants will know, I've been a sponsor on legislation to make sure that they have uh, professional titles and licensure. Uh, but beyond that, why I think they're so important, we have a very complex society right now. There are a lot of issues that we're facing in terms of unemployment, perhaps, or underemployment. You know, people with uh, medical um, issues, people with mental health issues, substance abuse disorders, so many kinds of things that people sort of need a guide to get through their lives and some help in many, in many times. And I'm a strong proponent of, of that. And I think that social workers are underutilized and how they can possibly help us resolve some of these really vexing community problems. Now, one of the things that you and I have talked about a lot on the television show, and, and you've talked a lot about it on the Senate floor, is the opioid crisis. You're right. very much involved in that. Uh, and so are social workers. One of the things we've talked about is how uh, the, it's not a one and done situation. When somebody who's addicted comes to a halfway house or is released from prison uh, on the, one of the warm releases, uh, they need that help and the continuing help that a social worker and or a counselor can provide. You're right, and um, the, the warm handoff, as you described it, is something that we are utilizing in Berks County. Um, we have received funding from uh, the Centers for Excellence from the state, and I was a strong proponent of that. And at uh, two of our hospitals, we are actually utilizing that warm handoff. Here's the thing I think about substance abuse that people don't think about. One, well, at least some people don't, I know this audience does, is the fact that it, uh, you know, it's not recovery and then you know, ha live happily ever after. It's not um, overdosing, receiving a dose of naloxone and going on your merry way. This is a struggle. It's a, you know, certainly something that people have to work at maybe numerous times. And that's very difficult sometimes for the average citizen to understand that. But in that journey, um, an individual needs more than just medical assistance. They need counseling. And they also need um, assistance with how to live their lives, how to restructure their lives so that they can overcome their addiction. That may mean looking at um, education, further education. It may look, m mean looking at how do you access some of the assistance that we provide in the state for uh, medical issues, you know, like medical assistance, or perhaps it means SNAP, the um, you know, food and nutrition food stamp program. So it may also mean um, you know, counseling in terms of where you'll go for education. It could come down to things as simple as transportation. You know, some people just don't know how to put their lives necessarily in the right order to be able to overcome some of these issues. This is where I see social workers being so critically important. I have found, um, even on some other things, I've met with social workers recently uh, from the Reading School District. They are deploying social workers to help families 
figure out housing issues, you know, figure out some of the issues of employment so that they, the, the parents of these, the children, the students, can get to work, so they can stay in the same um, you know, housing, so that the student can have some stability to their life and in their community. Social workers fit into all those aspects of our lives, and, and they're so important. We need to be um, accessing what they can make available to us. Now, I'm sure the social workers are interested uh, in, in how the state is backing them up, how mm -hmm. the state is providing them with the resources they need. So let's talk a little bit about what you've done and what the state and you are going to do in the future to make sure that uh, that they get that support. Well, you know, certainly, um, most recently, the governor has declared, in terms of the opioid issue, has de declared an, uh, an emergency, a statewide emergency, putting into place kind of a command system, um, bringing together some of the key players on the state level that can bring resources to the table. And that includes the Secretary of um, Health of, of Human Services. And um, they will be um, certainly thinking, because that's part of what they do, um, you know, what resources can be made available in the community, particularly to those who are working in children and youth systems, um, you know, some of the state um, service centers, um, social workers in the mental health system. They'll be looking at, you know, how they can continue to further support for them. One, you know, I've been very active in this issue as we've, we've talked about, um, you know, from community meetings and forums, just talking to parents and loved ones, um, giving them the opportunity to speak to others who um, either have experienced this in their own family and how they've ha you know, have been able to navigate the system. And quite often it comes down to all of those support systems where social workers are there at the forefront of helping to um, assist with that. Um, most recently, um, we were looking at the criminal justice system and uh, re-entry into the community. We have two state um, halfway houses in um, Reading, in my district, and there has been a serious issue with overdoses in that facility. And I have been um, uh, working very hard with the uh, Director of Community Corrections uh, through the Department of Corrections, Secretary Wetzel, um, other individuals within that system to help um, you know, make sure that we provide the best supports possible at that, those facilities. And not just in Reading, but throughout the entire Commonwealth. And again, I see that it's not just enough to provide um, drug and alcohol counseling, you know, dr uh, substance abuse counseling. You have to help people put their lives back together. It's like a puzzle. And all those pieces fit together. And that glue, in many cases, is the uh, knowledge and the assistance that social workers can provide. And let's talk a little bit about that, uh, the problem at that ADAPT uh, right. facility. Mm -hmm. You've been there, you've, like you said, you've talked to Secretary Wetzel. Mm -hmm. What sort of things, concrete th steps are being taken to make sure that we can get everything back online on there? Because we are talking about a company that has taken over very recently. Right. And it's a contracted facility. It, right. And some, uh, some who have been there, some family members have said they're not really doing the job they should. Well, that's absolutely true. So here's some of the improvements that I think we have helped to bring to, to bear there. One is the population there has been reduced by almost 50%. Um, in the halfway house itself, there's two facilities there. There is a, a halfway back house as well as a um, just a, a standalone uh, substance abuse um, counseling or treatment center. In the treatment center, people don't leave that facility. They don't go back out in the community so that they can, you know, obtain more drugs or something of that nature. But in both of those facilities, the numbers have been reduced so that it's easier for the staff to monitor what is happening, to work with the individuals there, to uh, do the kinds of security checks that need to be done, to work with them on, in terms of the employment um, that they're seeking and, you know, just helping them to sort of um, break through that, that mindset that you just came out of prison, but that you've got to find a way to become a productive member of the community once again. And it's more than just, I'm done my time and um, I'm ready to go back. It doesn't work that way. 
So we're, you know, we're, we're following that very closely. We're asking the contractor to um, continue to keep us updated. I'll keep visiting, and my visits will be unannounced so that I can truly see the picture of what's going on there. But that's just one facet of you know, the substance abuse um, issues that we're facing in, um, in my district. Another thing that I have done that I'm, you know, was just eye-opening for me was visiting uh, the neonic unit at Reading um, Hospital at Tower Health. Um, visiting and seeing the, um, you know, the kinds of uh, uh, treatment that is put in place for infants and for helping mothers and fathers, of the parents of these um, infants, to learn how to care for them. Um, these are um, infants that are born exposed to substances. That's the way we talk about them, not as being addicted, but they, they can't be. They didn't have a choice in that. They were exposed to these things and they need um, help in um, you know, growing and, and prospering without the, the substance in their system. So visiting that gave me some strong ideas, again, how social work is important in this. There certainly is the, uh, the uh, medical team that's there, the nurses, doctors, and so forth, but you also, and there are, social workers there that are helping uh, these parents learn how to um, reorient themselves to being parents and taking care of those infants. And you uh, introduced legislation uh, very recently uh, to make sure that uh, taking care of an infant is part of the whole system when a woman gives birth at a hospital, all of the services that she's given from the right. state, making sure that taking care of them and answering those questions is, is always part of that. Right. And uh, part of that bill, that's, I believe you're talking about Senate Bill 200, and um, what's involved the in postpartum. the postpartum right. uh, bill is uh, that for uh, mothers who are on medical assistance and who have uh, newborn babies, one of the um, indicators that we will be following, in addition to some of the other issues that they may find in their life, is postpartum depression, yeah. because that has such a serious impact on infants, and once again, within this bill are the supports and systems that are staffed by social workers. So, you know, again, you know, I want to thank everybody for listening to me for this brief period of time, but just to um, offer you, because I think it's important that you know, um, I'm not the only one, certainly in state government, who uh, thinks a lot about uh, what you bring to bear to our communities and the difference that you make. I encourage you to continue doing the work that you're doing and uh, to keep us informed. Um, I want to hear from you specifically what it is that we can do uh, on the legislative side, on the resource side, that you can do your jobs better. And again, thank you so much for um, sharing this time with us. And thank you, Don, for thank helping you, guide me through this conversation. <laughs> thank you, Senator.